everyone. Um, I'm Sergin Swat, a former ISTA, and would like to talk a bit about network visibility today. Uh, what is it, how a person, why do you care? And a little bit about myself, even though now I work at the vendor, my background is on the customer side, and one of the most frustrated topics of my network engineering career was network visibility and to be precise, the absence of one. The thing is, and you keep me honest about it, when we operate networks, it doesn't matter what size it is, which vendor, uh, network topology, distribution. Probably it will be always blamed first by other departments where something happened in production, isn't it? And our job as network engineers will always be to prove the innocence, or if there is a real issue, to find it and find it on time. I think time is the key. However, there are a couple of challenges, and one of those is that network devices became physically much bigger than before. Now we run hundreds of ports with heavy features on top, and flow information about particular data which doesn't change too often isn't scalable, but if you not pull data often enough, you may miss a spike or event. And add to that equation that you're running pretty heavy features on top, such as routing protocols, and that uh, under some particular circumstances, it can start to update routing table with information from all the neighbors. And if you pull all the counters, thresholds, binary on and offs, you will likely impact the performance of the device by simply putting it to And Another challenge is that traditional mechanism simply doesn't provide access to correct data. And furthermore, individually extracting the data from discrete components in your network might be no correlation. As for example, if you span across four points in your network, the data will be meaningless unless you span it at the exact same time. And don't forget that nowadays um, the focus is on automation. Automation is everywhere from device provisioning as fault is relation remediation in real time. And performance management as well as uh, real time tracking in green. So, traditional reactive approach or conventional monitoring tools simply doesn't work good enough to these programmable networks. And dynamic control plan will require more proactive error correction and detection. So, reactive approach should change to proactive. And proactive can be streaming system parameters based on the trigger built into the device itself. And if you take a Sony Pixis log, NetFlow standard traditional tools, uh, which was there and the functionality was put in there by vendors a couple of years before and the release of the main product. And by the way, SNMP was developed in the 80s, standardized in the 90s. Here we are in 2016 still the land. And probably up to that point, we should have another joint ways of monitoring such things like QTAPs, configuration data, states, counters, and statuses, and some of the streaming ways. Such way can be telemetry. Telemetry is when you send the data based on the triggers built on the device itself. And you can configure that request to send data when or to the if, basically, sending data to the end receiver. But now you can stop me and say, all right, that might be true, but what alternative do we have? And there are a couple of products from different vendors on the market, and we would like to cover our part, which is Terminator. And it's a new kind of US agent, which is capable of streaming a risk state to a receiver. So client will subscribe to internal database contain most of the configuration and statuses. It will share, uh, also subscribe to shared memory hash table. It will um, stream you large tables such as big R and Mac, not because the protocol states which enable statuses, big slang counters. You will also stream Linux kernel statistic consistent logs. And comparing to open config, POS will use open source interface GRPC. Recommended approach would be to use Terminator for all the raw state while using open config for random dependent state. So Terminator can be configured to push all the data um, to remote GRPC server, 
or it can be configured to write all the data in a JSON format, text like file, which is very useful when you troubleshoot and you, when you want to grab the stream. Here is an example of notification when you get mm -hmm. when you get tired of chasing by fancy switches and you decide to do recording with telemetry. As you can see, a uh, notification will consist of timestamp, path, list of devices, list of keys, and delivered in very neat format. So another thing, if your network is congested, probably you will expect to have hundreds and thousands of congestion events across all the network devices in the network. And use Lansley for troubleshooting, and you will have visibility into switch hardware interface buffers with granularity of less than one millisecond. Which the best way to analyze that amount of data is streaming via Google protocol buffers, export in CSV format, or stream it along as telemetry data, as you can see on the slide. More examples with very common and uh, useful sources such as interface counters, temperature sensors, various lens reports, hardware counters, health status of the platform, the list is big and it's getting bigger. So US event streaming does create lots of data and skip. However, thanks to runtime performance of both, its memory and CPU requirements are on par or less than the requirements of the rest of US features and agents. In steady state, we will expect uh, to consume around 80 to 400 megs of memory of the switch, it will depend on the platform, it will depend on the configuration and stages. Usually, it will translate into a few hundred kilobytes of data out of control plane, which will correspond to storage around 500 megs per day per device. The part I personally like the most is that you can run this on any kind of switch you have in your network topology. Of course, it should be. At the point, this is about telemetry. However, if it is open conflict, you can use other vendors, and it means that you can run it from top of the rack to leaves, spines, and edge. And if you, we're talking about the risk, you just need to run US software, which is newer than May 2013, means you can run it everywhere. And at that point, we would like to switch to a demo. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Vlad, I'm a software engineer at Arista. Uh, Sergey made me do the demo because uh, I work on Terminator, so if it fails, it's going to be just my fault. Uh, okay. Uh, is everybody okay with the font size? Okay, cool. So we have a switch here. So the demo is going to be, I'm going to do it with Terminator, but you could do the same thing and on Arista switches, but you can do the same thing with OpenConfig on any vendor that supports uh, the models that you're interested in. So it's somewhat uh, vendor independent. So the configuration is actually uh, pretty simple. Uh, it's just a different configuration. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use in, uh, in the first place the GNMI uh, client. It's an open source uh, CLI client for GNMI interface. So GNMI stands for Google Network Management Interface, uh, which uh, is the gRPC interface to OpenConfig, and uh, it's one of the things that Terminator, as well as uh, most of OpenConfig servers, would implement. So we're going to subscribe to uh, interface status. So as soon as we subscribe, uh, we are going to get the initial state of all the interfaces. So as you can see, uh, we get a lot more than just the interface status because we subscribe to the whole interface status subtree, which contains, you know, more things like MTU, uh, you know, MAC addresses and whatnot. So uh, at this point, we have the initial configuration, I mean, the initial status, and we can try to do a modification by shutting down the interface. And then, as you can see, the new state has been uh, streamed, and, you know, it's kind of interesting to note here two things. One, that actually only the fields that have actually changed have been streamed, so you don't uh, get things you know, like MAC address again because those things would be unaffected by the fact that I shut down the link. And also, that is not event-based in the sense that you get the new state, not uh, some sort of transition message or something like that. So um, 
you know, the new it just says the new state is linked down. So it's in that sense, it's not event based. It's just state based, but the state is streamed on changes. So we can uh, you know, shut it, and uh, we got a notification again. So this is like you know, simple CLI, uh, mostly for exploring or you know, troubleshooting some things. Um, but um, you can consume the, the streaming directly in your own system. You have like some custom monitoring system, or we provide uh, a bunch of gateways from Terminator to various popular monitoring systems. So you can stream it to InfluxDB, uh, to Kafka, and then you know from there you can pick it up with Logstash or whatever, um, or to Prometheus, to uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, what else? And we. You know, we have our own system, monitoring system called CVP. We want to go that route. Uh, so for the for this demo, I'm going to use uh, OpenConfig Beat, which will um, send the uh, the messages to Elasticsearch. So there is no log stash involved here. And okay, this seems to be running. And I'm, so I'm streaming. So from Open uh, OpenConfig Beat, I'm streaming the fan speeds and the uh, interface styles. And I'm going to show you quickly Kibana, which is another monitoring system. Uh, is the font too small? <coughs> is it OK? OK. So let's get it working, hopefully. Okay, so here you can see um, so let's make a bigger interval of four hours. And then, okay, so you can see here all the uh, events that are coming in, so mostly fan speeds because you know the fan fans change the time or uh, the speed all the time. So we do we go to visualization, we create the new one. We're gonna choose for instance a line chart uh, from the open config index. And then on y-axis we're gonna put the average uh, from the fan speeds uh, and on the x-axis the date histogram. second resolution and we'll just apply the changes and you can see that you know, the graph has been created and then you know you can easily save it from here and then you, you know build a dashboard with it uh, and that's pretty much it that's it from my side if you have any questions if we have time or the Otherwise, I mean, I'll still hang around and uh, you know, I'll be happy to talk to you. So, any questions? Hi, uh, my name is uh, Eric Flores. And um, about the open config, is, is it uh, supported or is like community based or is supported by the Elastic team? So no, uh, it's it was built by us. It's open source. You can so all these gateways and the CLI uh, utility you can find them on our GitHub page. So github.com slash Arista Networks. Um, it's supported in the sense that you know if you report any bugs, we're you know gonna fix them because you know it's in our interest. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but I don't. I mean, obviously there will no one be paid to uh, you know fix a bug in it or something like that. So. Uh, basically, yeah, I was like, where do I find the uh, to start the 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 truth is that we're starting to get some resources, and we're already using like an Elasticsearch stack for metrics and also log monitoring. And the OpenCon big bit, like for example, the can you configure to change the index name in order to set it up on Elasticsearch when you establish the on Elasticsearch? Um, Yes, you can. You you can have the the processors. So that's a library that comes with the beats 
uh, system and then the processor can do things like aggregate or uh, change the index name or things like that. So I'm uh, not an expert myself at uh, Elasticsearch, so uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to tell you all the fine details, but uh, from what I looked, uh, the, the Beats library seems to support that kind of stuff. So. Hi, and I'm Kevin from the network. Uh, I've worked at network automation team. And so you the chain of the terminal is running on the device, yeah. and it's exposing all of the data as a JSON, a giant JSON tree. Uh, not quite. So the way it works is subscribe. So there is a gRPC protocol, so it's a RPC protocol basically, and then you send a subscribe and you tell which path you want to subscribe to, so you're going to subscribe okay, that, to That's system. my question. Yeah. What, that, that query stream that you send, what is that in, indexing into and what syntax is it in? Um, so, for Terminator, uh, it's just a hierarchy, I mean, it's the same for Open Config as well, just a hierarchical path. So, you can think of it as a system, file system path. Uh, and it's so basically, you subscribe to one subtree of that path. And, you know, as I subscribe, as you can see in the uh, my demo here. So I subscribe to SysDB, which is our one of our uh, state source on the switch, then interface where presumably are things like ready to interface, and then you know status, and then a lot of those things are internal. So that's what's one thing with Terminator is that you kind of have to know this internal path. Uh, we would, I mean, if you want to deploy, we'd more be happy, more than happy to work with you to you know tell you. Uh, what you need to know, but you have to bear in mind that those are internal and they can change from version to version. So when you're subscribing to that uh, subtree, then you get all the changes that happen on the uh, on that particular part of the state uh, as, the, as they happen. So it's just basically a subtree. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you very much. If you have any other questions, you can find them after the talks around here.